It's going to be a long one. Hello, everybody. My name is Margaret. Welcome to my channel. You're on BookTube, which is a very exciting place to be these days. So today's video is going to be my February wrap-up, March TBR, smushed together, so a little longer. Also, kind of big because we're doing a new readathon this year for March. I know, I know another one I should have picked May. We'll change it next year. But for this year, March of the Moderns, 1901 to 1945, is going forward in all its glory. I hope you can participate by chipping in a book or two that's been wasting away on your shelves, waiting for your attention. Whether that's a modern mystery or a middle grade modern, although that might be harder, I'm sure you can find something. So to start with February, Black History Month, I had a very ambitious video. You will remember I thought I'd try a little bit of everything, and let's see how I did. I uh, had five books planned for Seiji's Black Lit Challenge over at the Artisan Geek channel, and I only got two points because I didn't get the poetry done, I didn't get the play done, because I had to concentrate on the big fat books that I had on that list. So only two out of five. That's fine. Jesse at Bowties and Books had Blackathon, and for that one I was thinking I would read a thriller and a science fiction fantasy on audio, and I have just not done any audio. I've basically been at home, which means I'm listening to YouTube videos instead of audiobooks because I'm not walking anywhere, so yeah. Steph's Romance Book Talk, she was doing a Black Author Readathon. Did not do anything for that because it was romances, and I just I don't know. I went to Comfort Reads on my shelf rather than Romances on, on ebook that would have been new. So unfortunately, that was that was my bad. I went for the convenient choice rather than the forcing myself to find something new. But there's 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 still hope. And then Helene at uh, Books by Lanus had a Black History book tag she wanted people to do, and I did do that one. I did it last Friday on my live, and that was super fun. I had a lot of great shout-outs to great booktubers, and I hope you check that out. So that's two out of four that I got done. <laughs> that's a terrible, it's not a passing grade. But, you know, I did have a good crop of books, so let me show you what I read for those participation trophies. So the first book was actually January, but it was finished in February. So Shakespeare in a Divided America by James Shapiro. I found this last uh, summer from the Hey on Why Festival. I was really interested in it because it takes a look at how Shakespeare can be interpreted differently depending on which side you're on in the culture debate in America from early on in the colonial era up till now. So he had a lot of uh, moments that he chose to examine and did lots of great research. And some moments I liked more than others. Uh, I realized he did a lot of work to find all the details and sort of present different sides. And I appreciate that. And I liked learning about those moments that I had not heard of. Some of them seemed like kind of a stretch to say that they were like a... a significant Shakespearean moment, but I mean, it's a theme. He can he can do what he wants. It's his book. Uh, I liked it overall, so I, I'd give this like a three and a half stars. The next one I've got is the one that I read during Live's uh, Quotes From, which you can't really see. It's quite an old copy, The Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. And you'll see on my tabs, because this is where I was like really, really getting a lot from it. This is a sociological text from 1905. That's in my head. I don't know if it's right. So a long time ago, a lot of it is still true. The observations are still very keen. It's not about soul culture. It's, it's not what I thought it was going to be about. It's about sort of his personal experience, Dubois' personal experience and observations and findings and conclusions and I found them to be very sound, contrary to my expectation of like, oh, he's old news and he's been overturned by current thinkers. I thought this is still really, really profound when I was reading a lot of it. Then I dove into this early on in the month. Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. I've had this on my shelf for a long time. 
unhauled it, hauled it again. <laughs> uh, got some tabs in there too. I haven't discussed this one yet because I just finished it yesterday. Yesterday. Feels like a long time ago. But I stopped after like the first three chapters because it was so disturbing uh, and took a while to get back into it. Um, did a little live tweeting, didn't get much traction with that, but it helped me sort of think about how my mind was changing, uh, my opinion about the book as I went through it. But I do still kind of come to the same opinion on it as Sean the Book Maniac, which is like, you get a lot of episodes of very oversized characters, and he called them allegorical, um, larger than life. This guy goes through all these experiences that are harrowing and horrific, and it's like a one-way trip. You never see any of those people again, and only, I think, two or three pop up in his mind and his thinking. You're never returning to conclude anything about them. His, ch his thinking changes about his previous experiences, but you don't ever get to see those people again. And you're left with sort of like a despair. And yeah, there were parts of it that were still very relevant. This is written in uh, early 50s, I think, about the 20s and 30s. Yeah, it was a difficult book to read, and justifiably so, based on the content. But I didn't really get a, a clear message from him about how to change my thinking by the end. And I'd have to read more widely to see if this is reflective of the writing of the period of um, the movement that he's part of and I'm just not familiar with. And then maybe it'll make more sense if I have more context. So anyway, short, long review of Invisible Man. But then we've got Survival Math, which is Mitchell S. Jackson's uh, biographical sort of creative nonfiction um, that we read for the Patreon book club, which I will put links down below if you want to join. This was our first book, our inaugural book, and we had some great discussion about what it brought up and what we know about this and what was new and what he was doing with the reader-narrator voice um, relationship and Maybe we'd like to hear from him again in 20 years to see what he has to say. Uh, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of interesting things about this former Portland resident, about his time spent in Portland growing up. So those are the main four books I read by black authors, black classics, black contemporary, etc. that um, were out of my normal range and I hope to read more of. And now... What other books did I read? So when I took a break from the, the horrifying scenes, um, I was preparing for March of the Moderns, and I was also <laughs> just fleeing and uh, doing the comfort reads, as I said. So I'm looking at my list here. I reread Jane and the Ghosts of Netley by Stephanie Barron, which is one of my favorite series. Jane Austen as a detective, and she does a great job. And this is, like, the crux of the series. I mean, I haven't read the whole thing, so I don't know if there's, like, another inflection point, but this was super heart-rending. I reread Dreaming Spies by Laurie R. King, one of another series that I have read almost all the books in, which is Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes, number 13. As another comfort break, I read Someone to Love, which is by Mary Below. This is a recommendation from my friend Tanya in D.C., and she's been tearing through books and recommended this author who I'd never read before. And, um, let's see. <laughs> I already can't remember. Uh, Westcott. Ah, right. Okay. It was very well done and the plot went fine and it was, you know, predictable romance. I had a little hard time with the inciting incident, but it was fine. I mean, it's a Regency romance. What are you going to do? There was a moral message, and I don't know. I liked it fine. Okay, and then the other romance that I read was a dud. I checked out A Duke, the Lady, and a Baby on Rosie Cockshut's recommendation and did not like it. I sort of, like, speed read through it because I was hoping it would get better. It's way too informal in language, so it doesn't really give me a feeling of the period. It's supposed to be a Regency romance. 
Um, there was some interesting stuff about Demerara and the sort of uh, biracial character's background and bringing that in, but the modern stuff was just, it just stuck out too much for me, so that was 2.5 stars. Something that put me to sleep at night was this book that I found when cleaning the garage for my parents, and it's called Maintaining the Spirit of Place. It's like a government manual, community worker manual for uh, putting together community meetings and making sure that your county or city or town develops in a way that you all agree on and no one gets gentrified out of existence or some such thing. And it was interesting. I, I only have a couple tabs turned down. It's from 1985, so I, I read through it for what it gave me, which was a little bit more uh, legibility of planning maps and the planning process, and that's basically it. Now I can pass it on to Goodwill. My other sort of like fast-paced, plot-based, exciting reads. Um, I did a buddy read with Will of Ilum Reads, his channel. And it's my first ever Cassandra Clare, The Clockwork Angel, which is what he recommended for a winter read and a first read for her series. I speed read it because it was very action-y and um, the characters were interesting. So I enjoyed that. The final book that I read in February was In Preparation for March, The First Emma by Camille de Mayo. So this book is a historical fiction set in two timelines, the 1910s, 1910s, and 1940. So there's um, two things that we follow, and it's ripped from the headlines. So it's very entertaining. Um, we will be hearing from her. She's going to be coming on my channel uh, next Sunday, March 7th. So be sure to tune in 4 p.m. So... 4 p.m. Pacific time. She is going to chat with me about some of the research she did for her book and social movements, things happening at the time um, that will give us a little bit more context, a little bit more background on the modern period and maybe how it's affecting us now. So that's February. Locked and loaded. And now we're ready for March of the Moderns. Okay, let's start with this. We have two resources that you should know about for March of the Moderns. One is the Buddy Read sign-up sheet, so I have that down below. You could definitely check that out. If you want to Buddy Read any of the books that are listed, put your name next to it and contact that person. If you want to just read a book and participate because it's in the time period and watch each other's videos, just put your name down at the bottom and tell us when you're going to film a video about it so we can all check it out. Um, the other one is the bingo sheet, so here's my copy, March of the Moderns, and basically we've got 10 ways to get a bingo. I've put different prompts on here. Some are descriptive and some are thematic, so some you may find you fulfill accidentally when you read a book. Hopefully it's not too hard, and we'll see. I think I've got like four or six like thought through, um, so I don't have bingo yet, so I'm hoping some of the themes come through in the books that I'm reading. <laughs> All right, so that's the two resources that I'll put down in the description, and now for the books. I'll start with the buddy reads, because I'm for sure reading those. You know, I always honor the commitments I make to others before the commitments I make to myself. Yeah, I know. Okay, so the first one is going to be Precious Bane by Mary Webb. This is the delightful Virago classic for those of you who like those kinds of things. I'm going to be buddy reading this with... Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, who's rereading it, and Tony from Book Text, who is a co-host for this readathon. She's helping me out on Instagram because I am a dunce on Instagram. Woohoo! <laughs> so that's going to be first. I think our live discussion is going to be Friday, March 12th. So see you then. The next one I have qualifies for the Irish Athon as well because my copy is rather plain, but uh, The Playboy of the Western World by John, is it J. Millington Singh? Singe? I don't know. Lana probably knows how to pronounce it better than I do. So I read Riders to the Sea earlier, and this is the other play that's in this. And he's an Irish playwright in the period. We're going to be reading this together. Lana of Lana X Libris, who's delightful. 
Uh, and we may be doing some dramatic readings on St. Patty's Day. We'll see if the timing works out for her. We're, we're very far apart, so it might be a little hard to coordinate. Cross your fingers. Next, we have a Persephone book. One of the ones that, like, inspired this readathon, right? So, this is High Wages by Dorothy Whipple. And I'm going to be better reading this with Katya Weinert. We're going to be doing our live discussion on... Sunday, March 21st, and this is going to be my first Dorothy Whipple, too. I just saw someone call her the Jane Austen of the 20th century. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. Next, we have The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is something I've had for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to be buddy reading this with Sina of Beating Around the Books, Angie from Literary Labors, and Kelly, who is a bookstagrammer, Kelly Hunsaker. So all their information will be down below, and our live discussion will be Sunday, March 28th, also down below. <laughs> and then finally, I've got the granddaddy of them all. Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. So this is a black author continuing Black History Month into March of the Moderns. I haven't read her before. Amazing, right? But true. So I'll be reading this one for a live discussion on Wednesday, March 31st to close out the month with my other special guest, historian Donna Sinclair. And she's done amazing talks on history, on environment, on policy. And so I'm very excited to discuss this book with her. So tune in for that. And now we can start on my baby books. This is the one I started today because Precious Bane is due until March 12th. So I got plenty of time, plenty of time to coast another book in there, right? This is The Marrow of Tradition by Charles W. Chestnut. It is a fiction based on the 1898 riot in Wilmington. And I've seen people reading Wilmington's Lie, which is a nonfiction about the same event. That is modern. It's this last year's book, but this is written in 1901. So... It both starts out the modern period that we're looking at and is very topical for today because insurrection. I'm looking to finish one of the books that slid off the uh, February list because, well, I didn't get too far into it, but it seems pretty easy reading. And again, I have until January, sorry, I have until March 12th to finish Precious Bane. So I feel like it's ages, right? It's 11, 11 days for three books. I could do that. This is about Eunice Carter, the black female lawyer who took down the criminal mafia boss in the 30s. So very much uh, looking forward to that. Then we've got Dorothy Parker, Laments for the Living. This book is so beautiful and aged. I don't know if I'll get to it. No one wanted to read it with me. So we'll see. We'll see if there's room. Then we've got the books that I didn't get to in February, Descent, which is a reread, which I think I might get more out of a second time. And I Am Not Your Negro, James Baldwin's uh, speeches and texts put into like a play form, a movie form, a script form. So that should be good. And the Booktube Spin book, which is doesn't fit in anywhere, but I don't know, maybe I'll, it's not a comfort read either. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get this done. How an Island Lost Its People, Improvement, Clearance, and Resettlement on Lismore, 1830 to 1914. So this is part of, like, the clearances in Scotland and the big cultural change and environmental change that was brought about by industrialization and class changes and stuff. So it's a topic I like, but my mind is on so many other things that, I don't know, we'll see. Finally, we've got one that Kelly marked down in the buddy read, William and Englishman. It's another Persephone book. It's got war themes. It's got LGBTQ themes. It might be a lot, um, but it's, it's not too long. So we'll see if she has a, a date in mind for this. We'll maybe just put it at the end and then div dribble over into April. We'll see. And then finally, we've got Buzzwordathon. And the keyword you have to have in the title is time. So I... In all of my books, I mean, besides the ones I've already read, the unread books on my shelf, I could only find two uh, <laughs> from time to time, which is the sequel to the one that is made into a Christopher Reeve movie, and writers on writing collected essays from the New York Times. I know, it's a cheap shot. 
But anyway, so maybe we'll get to that, maybe not. That's a lot of books. If I have another month like January, this could get done. But I'm doing a lot of administrative stuff for the readathon. So it might be more like February. January was 20 books. February was 11. We'll see. The other thing that I did for February was Friday Night Lives, and I think I'm going to continue that, but without the snappy title, because I'm going to move it up a little bit, because I think people who are 8, 9, 10 hours forward might want to participate, and might as well try out putting it in their time zone to see if they do. So I think I'll do it at noon, and now I don't have a title for it, but submit your title. Submit your clever title for a Friday at noon I don't know, it sounds like a lecture at college where people would show up with a brown bag lunch and listen to someone. But I'm not going to be lecturing. I don't know. Maybe I'll just say, hey, I'm going live. <laughs> Maybe you'll see me in costume for one of these because I do have some 1901 to 1945 costumes. Uh, ish. Taste Life twice. This is what we're doing this March with the readathon. Thanks for joining me. All of those who are, I will be shouting you out this Friday on my nude live uh, so people can know who to watch to find out about the. <laughs> That's about it. I, I better get back to reading. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Now I can't remember what.